Okay, in this video, we're going to go over a concept called the unit circle. Now, this is a very important concept for geometry and trigonometry and for calculus. So um, this is going to be the briefest of introductions. But I would like to cover the following topics here. Uh, first of all, I'm going to cover what is a unit circle, again, just briefly. Um, what is a radian? It's a new vocabulary word for you. Where did we get the idea of pi? Remember, pi is 3.14. Um, then how do we convert radians to degrees? And then how do we convert degrees to radians? So there, there's quite a bit here, obviously. So let's get started. Okay, so first of all, what is a unit circle? So if you took the phrase unit circle, it's exactly what it means. A circle that has a radius of exactly one unit. So think of this as this circle is on a number line, okay? So here's my x-axis, here's my y-axis. This would be 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, et cetera, et cetera. Same thing with along the y-axis, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, et cetera. So the unit circle actually has a radius of exactly one. So if I were to pivot all the way up through here, again, it stays as one all the way to here, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, <clears throat> so that's a unit circle, just briefly. So what is a radian? Now, I want you to imagine something with me here. If I were to take this unit length, okay, so from here to here, this radius, and I were to, let's say, make it really uh, like a spaghetti noodle, okay, so something really, really soft. And I were to start to wrap that unit around the outside or circumference of the circle, okay? Bear with me. Uh, go with me on this one. Use your imagination. So I'm taking this length right here, and I'm going to lay it right along the edge of the surface here. It'll probably go to right about there. Okay, so that would be like one radius. Let's take the next one. Let's put another one on top. And it would go to, oh, like right around there, let's say. Okay, so that would be like two radius or radians. Just hold that for a second. Let's do the next one. Let's put a third one down. You'd think it would reach all the way to the bottom, but it really doesn't. It stops right about there. So I have one two, three of my radians, and this last little bit right here, anybody want to guess what that length is? It's about 0.14 of the radius. Now that should be familiar now, right? If one, two, three, point one four, the length or the, yeah, the length of the circumference of the half circle is pi. We call that length, that 3.14 length or units, pi, okay? Now that's just another way of calling it. So like, you know, we say 12 units are a dozen. We just give it a name, right? Um, this is exactly the same idea. We just give 3.14 a name and we call it pi, and we give it that little symbol. Now, let me just erase this for just a second. I want to show you why that's important, because we're going to have a lot of writing on this circle here. There we go. Okay, so if we've gone, and actually, let me just go ahead and pen, pen that in, make it a little bit more solid. So at the point negative one zero, the distance along this curved half, top half of the circle is exactly 3.14 units or pi. Now notice that that's half the circle. If I were to continue all the way around the bottom half of the circle and go back to my origin, that would also be a length of 3.14 units or also pi. So here, we would say the distance all the way around the circle would be exactly 2 pi. Doesn't that sound familiar? We know that the circumference of a circle 
The formula for the circumference of the circle is 2 pi r. And in this case, since the unit circle is 1, the radius is 1, the circumference would be 2 times pi times 1, or just 2 pi. So that's where we get the formula for a circumference. And a radian, basically, again, is just the length of the unit circle's radius. Okay, so I just answered number two and number three. Now we're going to um, so let me let me just go back. So a radian basically is just a length, right? It's related to a length. And let me just write that down here, related to the length around the outer edge of the circle, but it's also related to the number of degrees in a circle, right? Because each of these points along the way have a number of degrees associated with it. So let me show you how to get from radians to degrees. <clears throat> now before we do that though, we need to go back to our unit circle and mark some more important points along the way. So again, let's just look at the top. From here to here, we said is one whole pi, right? It's just pi. If we were to go halfway, that would be half a pi, or pi over 2, okay? Then we go down here another half a pi, so it's a whole pi. Let's go all the way down to here, so that'd be 1 half, 2 halves, 3 halves. Pi would be right here, or 3 pi over 2 which would correspond to the coordinate 0, negative 1. And then finally, all the way back up to here, which would be one half a pi, 2 halves, 3 halves, 4 halves, or ends up being 2 pi. Okay? So notice we're starting to give names for these coordinates other than just the coordinates 0, 1. We could also just call this 2 pi, and it would be right here. Half a pi would be right here. Let's keep dividing this up, and I'm not going to do the whole circle because that would be really kind of messy, but I'm going to do some important points. So let's just go to the first quadrant, all right? Now if I were to go from here to here, which is half a pi, halfway across there would be a quarter pi, all right? So I'm going to say pi over 4. Now look what happens here. That is exactly 45 degrees. So pi over 4 has a 45 degree angle associated with it. Pi over 2 has the 90 degree angle associated with it. Okay? Let's keep dividing it even further. All right. If I were to go from here to here, that would be pi over 6. Pi over 6 has a 30 degree angle associated with it. Let me go up to here. That would be pi 1, 6. Let's go another 6. It'll be 2, 6, or pi over 3, right? Would have 60 degrees associated with it. Now, I'm choosing 30, 45, 60, and 90 very deliberately. By the way, you do that all the way around here. Just keep on adding more and more. So let me just... Let me just show you something real quickly. So if I were to do, let's go back to the 45, and let's go halfway between pi over 2 and a whole pi. So it would be, what, 3 quarters of a pi? All right, so it would be 3 pi over 4. What would be the number of degrees associated with that? Well, I know it's 90 up to here, plus another 45 here, so 90 plus 45 would be 100 
and 35 degrees would be at 3 quarter pi, right? And then you can do the same thing with pi here, the 30, the 60, just go. You'll notice you're going to get something very, very symmetrical. All right, all these distances are about the same. And just keep on adding them. Finally, I want to go over how do we convert... Well, actually, no, let me, let, me, let me do something here. So we said that this one, for example, was a 45 degree angle, right? I'm going to take right that point right here and drop a straight line down. So what I've created is a 45, there's a 90, so I know that this angle also has to be 45. So let me just put that down here. Now why am I doing that? Because what I want to show you is what these coordinates are. We know that this is 1, 0, but what's this coordinate? Is clearly the x is less than 1, and clearly the y is also less than 1. So how do we find out what that coordinate is? Okay, so that's a really important point. So we know that's 45, that's 45, and that's my 90. Remember the formula for a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle? We said that if this was A, then this is also A, and this would be A times radical 2, right? That was the formula. Now, what do we know about this particular hypotenuse here? We know that it's 1, isn't it? Because it's a unit circle. So I'm going to say A radical 2 is equal to 1. Remember, we did those problems. We're going to divide both sides by radical 2. Both cross out. And we're going to get A is equal to 1 over Radical 2, remember you're not supposed to have this in the denominator, so we're going to multiply by radical 2 over radical 2. That's going to give me A is equal to 1 radical 2 over radical 4, which is just 2, right? So the coordinate, this is what I can say now, this length, the x length, which would be down here, is radical 2 over 2 lengths. So at 45 degrees, the coordinate is radical 2 over radical 2, but it's also the A length this way. This is the Y. So it's radical 2 over radical 2. And that would be the coordinate at pi over 4. We can do the same thing for the 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. Let me just erase this so I don't confuse things too much. Let's drop a straight line down here at the 30 degrees. We know this is 30, which means that's my perpendicular in 90. This has to be 60 here angle here. So let's pull that out. Okay. There's my 90. There's my 30. Again, we know what's the formula. That's 60. What's the formula for a 30, 60, 90? We know that this is A. We know the hypotenuse would be 2A. And we know that this distance would be A times radical 3. Remember that formula that we did. We also know that 2A, the hypotenuse here, is just 1. So let's make it equal to 1. Which means that A 
is one half. And therefore, this length right here would be one half radical three or just radical three over two. And this part here would be one half. So the coordinate at pi over six would be radical three over two, one half. The coordinate at pi over four would be radical two over radical two. That's at the 45. I want you to see if you can figure out the rest of these, okay? Okay, so that was quite a bit of information. Uh, go ahead and do your best on that and give me your notes. Thanks so much.